my name is Steve English. I'm the team leader for the Nature Center's Butterfly Monitoring Program, and I give pollinator gardening talks. I'm also a National Wildlife Federation Habitat Ambassador. My former house was on a three quarter acre suburban lot that was partially wooded. I maintained a manicured yard, lots of chemicals, water, and petroleum to keep it this way. In 2006, my wife and I purchased a five acre wooded lot to build a new home. The first day of construction was tough. The bulldozer wiped out 10 to 15 trees in just a few hours. That tree loss plus my realization that constructing a large new home was very wasteful. Good for the economy, bad for the environment. That started me thinking about how I could make up the damage. Then on Earth Day 2010, I attended a native plant landscaping talk at the Nature Center and had an epiphany. Why not use the native plants instead of all the alien plants that I had used at my previous yard? The native plants have evolved with the native wildlife and are much more productive. So one of the first things I started doing was adding butterfly host plants such as milkweeds, sunflowers, asters, grasses, and even some sedges. And then free of charge, many additional host and nectar plants came in on their own. I've added a number of tree species, including sweet bay magnolia, dogwood, black and pussy willow. I've allowed oak, cherry, red cedar, pawpaw, and spice bush to naturalize. The other big benefit of all the trees is the amount of leaf litter that is produced, which is a fantastic home for many animals. Unfortunately, the animal ash borer didn't bypass our property. But instead of getting rid of the dead trees, I've allowed them to become wonderful homes for a myriad of critters and fungi. And of course, I've had my fair share of battles with invasive plants. Instead of burning or sending them to landfill, I've turned them into beneficial brush piles. I've recorded 39 butterfly species. The host plant approach is definitely working. And I'm thrilled with the pollinator activity in general. Often I can stand and listen to the buzz of all the bees, wasps, flies, and beetles. And each summer, I get to watch an amazing flight of dragonflies and damselflies that live around the two creeks on our property. I've also enjoyed a wide range of other wildlife. Frogs, salamanders, toads, four snake species, birds of all sorts, and lots of mammals, the most exciting of which were a least weasel and a red fox. First of all, I'd recommend starting out with what you're comfortable with. Small is often better. Converting a 10 by 15 piece of lawn into a native planting bed is a good start. And like I did, enjoy learning as you go. Plant for flowers and vegetation. Blooms attract butterflies and bees, but don't forget about the value of the leaves that support all kinds of wildlife. Allow insects to eat your plants. That's what they're supposed to do. And if the holes in the leaves bother you, then practice what Doug Talmy calls his 10-step rule. If you see holes in the leaves, back up 10 steps and bingo, the holes disappear. Also, you'll need to work on invasive plants. Working on invasive plants can be frustrating, but it's very important to keep them under control. And be a little messy. This is another cultural change because we're programmed to clean up. But if you can study the situation, you'll find that putting leaves into your beds and leaving your plants alone until spring can be very beneficial to loads of wildlife. And lastly, tell your family and friends about what you're doing. I've done 180 degree turnaround, as you can see from all the pictures. 
and I've continued to study and learn so that I'm confident enough to spread the word. It's very rewarding to see more and more people make this change. Thanks for listening and go native now.